A sequence of numbers can be described as arithmetic. This is where the difference between consecutive terms is constant. We call this the common difference. And we use the letter D to represent that common difference. And basically, this means that you can add or subtract the same number to get each term. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have the sequence of 80, 77, 74, 71, and 68. And that can continue. The difference between 80 and 77 is minus 3. 77 and 74 is also minus 3. 74, 71, minus 3. And 71, 68, minus 3. So this means our D value, our common difference, is negative 3. Another example, we could have the sequence 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. So, for each of these terms to get to the next, we would add 5, add 5, add 5, and add 5. So our common difference is 5. And because we have a common difference, this and the other example, these sequences are called arithmetic sequences. Let's say there was a sequence of numbers, but you wanted to know the value of the 100th term. You're not going to add 5 100 times to find that value. We're going to use what we call an explicit formula. And like I said, the point of an explicit formula is to help you find the value of any term. So to find any term, a sub n represents the term value of what you are looking for. So we're going to say n is the term you are looking for. All right, then we have a sub 1, meaning the first term. So actually, down here, what says n equals, I'm going to say the term number you're looking for. So if we're looking for the 100th term number, like the value of that, you would say a sub 100. Okay, so then if I just said a sub 1, that's the first term, plus d, which we know is our common difference, and then n, which again, down here, the term number you're looking for, minus 1. So if we look back at this example from before, the explicit formula would be a sub n equals your first term, which is 80, plus your common difference. And since it's negative 3, we can just say minus 3, and then times n minus 1. And we leave in n because, again, based off the question, we don't know what term number we're looking for. So if you were given or you created an explicit formula, the next step would be find the, and let's say, 50th term. So you would take, you would be finding a sub 50, which would be 80, minus 3, times 50, minus 1, which is negative 67. So if we kept this pattern of minus 3, minus 3, minus 3, this common difference, and we did it 50 times, the 50th term number would be negative 67. This is the second example we looked at before. Take a second and see if you can come up with the explicit formula of this arithmetic sequence.
So this arithmetic sequence, the explicit formula for this arithmetic sequence would be a sub n equals 5 plus 5 n minus 1. And this 5 represents the first term and this 5 represents the common difference. So if I said find the 50th term, what would you get? you would get 250. There's another formula out there called the recursive formula. A recursive formula of an arithmetic sequence relies on the term that comes before, or that came before. So unlike the explicit formula, you can't just jump to a later term. So, a recursive formula looks like this. You have a sub 1, which represents the first term. So whatever that is, that would be right here. And then you would say a sub n, the again, n representing the term that we're trying to find. So if it was 50, like before, it would be a sub 50. And then a sub n minus 1 plus d. d is still our common difference. However, the new part is this n minus 1, and this n minus 1 represents the term that came before. So you actually need two parts to a recursive formula because you need a way to find the term that came before. So let's look at some examples. Okay, so again, using the arithmetic sequence before, 80, 77, 74, 71, and so on, this right here, a sub 1 is 80, our first term, a sub n, we don't know what we're looking for, and then you have a sub n minus 1, but then we need our common difference minus 3. So this is what it would look like. So, could you find the 100th term using this? Yes, however, it would take a very long time because you only have terms 1, 2, 3, 4 and to get to 100 you need 99 but to get 99 you need term number 98 and to get to 98 you need term number 97 so this is where you kinda see how explicit formulas are um, a little bit more helpful when you're jumping up to say terms like term numbers like 100 um, but I can ask you why don't you state the first five terms and we have our five terms up here, or four terms, and you'll be able to see that we're going to then take 80 and then generate 77. So because we have 80 to start, we know that's our first term because a sub 1 represents our first term. Then you do a sub n minus 1. While a sub n minus 1 would be where we put in 80 if we're trying to find the second term. So this is our first term, we're trying to find our second which means we would plug in 2 right here, and then we'd have a sub 2 minus 1. Well, what's this little problem right here? What's 2 minus 1? 1. So technically, this whole term is represented by a sub 1, which we know is 80. So 80, then you have to do the minus 3, and you get 77. Then if we continue to this, this would then become a sub n minus 1 again. But now our n is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. a sub 2 we just found was 77. So then we get 74. And then we're going to get 71. And then we're going to get 68. So you need each of these terms the previous term to find the term you're looking for. And this is the second arithmetic sequence that we looked at before. This would be our recursive formula for it, having the first term, a sub n, and then our common difference was 5. So if I said find the first five terms, the formula gives us 5. a sub n minus 1 would become a sub 1, because again we're looking for the second term, so n would be 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, so a sub 1 is 5. Then you have to do a plus 5, and you get 10. Then the n sub 1 would become 3 minus 1, so then we would have a sub 
2, which we know is 10 because we just found it, and then you have to add 5. So this is our third term. And then n sub 1 would be, uh, let's see, it's be 4 because now we're looking for a fourth term. So n would be 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. We just said that that was 15. Add 5, 20, and so on. This takes a little bit more time to get used to, but we'll do plenty of practice.